Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a flashlight slingshot that looks like this. This is a hammer grip slingshot that which I designed and it holds the Thrunite T10 flashlight in the bottom very firmly. The flashlight which I'm going to be using in this slingshot is the Thrunite T10 which was sent to me by the company Thrunite for free and I've done a whole video of reviewing and torture testing this flashlight so it'd be really cool if you could go and check it out and the link will be in the description of this video. As you can see this slingshot's made of plywood and it's made of three layers of 18mm multiplex birch plywood which is incredibly strong and it's furniture grade plywood. This would be very useful for sort of target shooting in the dark or even hunting if you do that sort of thing. So let's see how you make the slingshot. So firstly you need to find a design, you can use my design and I've got the blueprints in the text description of this video and you can download them. As you can see they don't have any sizing on them because every people's hands are different sizes so you need to size it up when you print it off so that it fits your hand very well. You also need to make it so that this circle down here can fit the torch which you're going to be using. As you can see I'm going to be using the Through Night T10 which is an incredibly bright and powerful torch and I've got a review on it on my channel so there'll be a link in the description to that and you can see the circle here is the exact same size as the T10. Then cut out the design and trace it onto some plywood twice. For this it's incredibly important that you use the right type of plywood. If you just use rubbish plywood with lots of voids and only five different layers or something like that, then the slingshot's likely to break and one of the forks could hit you and it could be incredibly dangerous. You have to also use plywood because of the different angles in the forks. As you can see it changes angle here and you need cross laminated plywood. This is multiplex furniture grade plywood and it's got lots of different layers and it's incredibly strong. It's made of birch. So I've then cut out the design twice out of this 18 millimeter plywood and then glued it together using wood glue. I'm really sorry that I didn't have any video about this, but I did video some time lapse video of it and in between the steps. But while I was transferring the videos across from my SD card to my computer, I managed to accidentally delete them and I'm not able to retrieve them, so sorry about that. So as you can see, this is what the slingshot looks like now. If you don't have any idea how I've got to this step, just ask a question in the comments down below and hopefully I'll be able to reply to it. So now to build up more layers on the plywood so that it can be thick enough to make it really ergonomic, I'm going to use some of these off cuts which came off while I was cutting out using my scroll saw. And if you're using hand saw, you might not have had some off cuts like this, but you can still use just other pieces of plywood and I'm going to glue them on with wood glue like this. This is going to mean that these areas are going to be thick enough so that it can make the slingshot very ergonomic. This is the pieces of wood once they're clamped up and I'm just going to wait for the glue to set. So now that the glue is set and these are all both on very solidly, like I can't pull them off even if I tried my best to. Yeah, they're definitely on very solidly. Now I'm going to start to make sure that these are all flush to the basic outline of the profile of the other wood and I'm going to also make this bit flush along here. To do this I'm going to be using a combination of rasps, hand saws and occasionally some sanding drums. Also to smooth some bits out and get rid of some of the deep scratches by the rasps I'm going to use some metal files. So this is what it looks like after the rough shaping. As you can see everything's to the basic outline of the slingshot and there's no gaps in between the layers and it could have been made from one large piece of wood. Now I'm going to start shaping the slingshot so that it fits my hand really nicely and I'm going to make it so that there's a palm swell here that comes out like that and that there's a dent in here for my fingers to wrap around more easily. So this is what it looks like after I've shaped it and rounded it just for the handle part. It feels really nice when you hold it and you can pull as hard as you can on the forks and you don't really feel any parts of it digging in. It's still incredibly rough from all of the deep scratches left behind by the rasp but you generally kind of want to create a shape like this with a swell coming out for your hand to grip on like that and something kind of like curved for your fingers to wrap around more easily. So now I'm going to be looking to make the hole in here where I can attach the torch into and in my hole saw bit set and you can just buy a set like this off Amazon for only a couple of pounds um, I've managed to found one which fits onto the head of this very well I've just drilled it in a test piece of wood like this and it fits in very snugly and stays in there once I tighten up the bolts it'll be fine and you can still work the torch and everything 
just fine while it's inside the hole. You could also use regular drill bits like this and just drill the hole directly in the centre and then larger it up with files and rasps. The reason I'm not using my Forstner drill bits here is because I can't find one the exact right size because they don't come in as much range as the hole saw bits. For drilling the hole in the bottom of the handle, I'm going to make sure that the drill bit first is lined up completely in the centre and then I'm going to use my drill press to make sure that the hole is vertical. You don't have to use a drill press, you could also use a normal hand drill, but it won't ensure that the hole is completely vertical and the torch might not be aiming directly straight compared to the slingshot and that would be really annoying. So as you can see I've drilled halfway through and I've pulled out the core of halfway. I'm, it must have snapped off with the spinning of the drill and the hole from this drill bit here has came out the other side so now I can put it this way up, line it up vertically and drill through the other half and then it'll be a hole all the way through. So this is what the slingshot looks like once the hole has been drilled all the way through and it's really smooth and round on the inside and I can put the torch in there and it doesn't really wobble around that much and I'm sure once I tighten it up it'll be in there very securely. As you can see there's an uneven distance around here with the distance between the hole and the edge of the hole so I need to even all of this up using rasps. As you can see once I've done that it's much more even every gap around the side here. Now all I need to do is cut the slot here and drill the holes for the bolts to tighten up so that then once the torch is inside the slingshot like this I can then tighten up the bolts either side and it will clamp it in so that it can't wobble about. So as I was cutting the slots, the two layers delaminated and I just figured out why. It's because since this was used for furniture, it had a polyurethane coating on one side and when I glued it together with wood glue, I actually forgot to remove this coating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my belt sander, remove the coating on this and remove the excess glue on this side here and then glue them back together so that they line up exactly and then finish cutting the slot. So I've glued it back together and left it to dry overnight and now it's on really firmly, I definitely can't pull it off. And I also took off the varnish layer in between the two pieces so that it definitely won't come off because it's wood to wood contact instead of wood to plastic. I've then finished cutting the slot and as you can see when I squeeze it, it slightly closes this hole and then basically this, the flashlight's going to go in there and I'm going to tighten up bolts that are going to close this and then that's going to squeeze it together and hold the flashlight in place. Now I basically need to drill holes for the bolts and install them. So I've gone ahead and drilled two holes here and put these very small bolts through and tightened them up and now this doesn't even move at all, even in the slightest when you wiggle it once they're tightened up and you can turn it on and it works just like that and I can tell that it's already going to be quite accurate for shooting. Now all that I've got to do is take out the slingshot and then finish making the rest of this fork area, curving it and making it look nice and then sand everything up. So this is what the slingshot looks like once I've finished all of the shaping. As you can see it's pretty much symmetrical and all of these edges are pretty much the same on both sides. The only thing that's not symmetrical is the grain and that's fine because it's wood. And if I hold it and pull on the top as hard as I can, it doesn't feel any strain on my wrist and I can barely feel any parts digging into me. And also as you can see if you look closely, I've gone and taken a uh, regular metalworking file and removed all of the deep scratches left behind by the rasp so it'll be much quicker when I get onto sanding. Now I'm going to be using a combination of rat tail files and a rat tail rasp to create a groove going all the way around here which is going to be used for attaching the bands onto the slingshot. So this is what the band attachment part looks like once I've filed the grooves in. Basically the bands are going to be flat bands and they're going to sit over the front here and then I'm just going to wrap rubber around them like that. So now that everything's been sanded up I've got out all of the deep scratches with the rasps. I've made the grooves for the bands to attach and the slingshot feels really nice and it's in its final shape that I want it to be in. It's now time to start sanding up so that it's really smooth and so you can't feel any roughness in it. 
this step is optional you don't have to do it the slingshot's completely functional just like this and you could use it just fine but i think it's a lot nicer if you do sand it up for the sanding i use a combination of sanding sponges made for metal work since they give a really fine polish and then i also use normal wood sandpaper I'm going to sand it all the way up from using 80 grit sandpaper all the way up to 600 grit sandpaper and that's going to give it a really nice smooth finish which will feel really nice when you hold it. So this is what the slingshot looks like after sanding and as you can see it's completely smooth. If I run my finger over it I can not feel any scratches in it anywhere and you can see all of the different layers of the multiplex plywood transition between each other very smoothly. Now I'm going to coat the slingshot in a coat of boiled linseed oil. This is going to help protect it from water damage and it's also going to bring out the grain and the contrast between the layers of plywood really nicely. So this is what the slingshot looks like after I've oiled it and as you can see the grain has came out really nicely in all of these different areas. I can then put these two bolts in, put in the torch and attach it on the front bit and then tighten up the two bolts and I can then turn on the torch and it works just fine and it's held in there very strongly like I can't pull it out at all. As well as that if you want to change modes on this torch you can just turn it like this and it will change modes just like that and since it's got a firm hold on the front bit but it's not attached at all on the back bit you can also then unscrew it all of the way like this and take out the battery and put in a new battery and then re-screw it back up and then you can change the batteries without even having to fiddle with any of this which is very useful so this is what the slingshot looks like once i've attached some theraband gold as the flat bands and you can just pull it back and shoot like this i've attached some theraband gold to the slingshot that's the type of flat bands which I'm using. can shoot 15mm steel ball bearings and as you can see I've got the Thunite T10 clamped up on the bottom like this. I'm going to be shooting indoors since it's raining outside and I don't really want to get my camera all wet. So let's see if I can hit the target. The good thing about this slingshot is when I aim at it, it seems like the torch is pointing right in the middle. So I'm pulling it back at the moment and aiming straight at the target. And as you can see, the torch is lighting it up pretty much right in the middle. If you do pull it back and say you're pulling it back like this or like this and the torch isn't aiming at anything like it at the target, then you're probably going to want to adjust the angle that the torch is pointing at so that it's pointing right in the middle of where you're aiming. As you can see this is a deodorant can which I'm shooting at and obviously it's empty because I don't want it to just blow up indoors. Um, and as you can see the ball bearing hit so hard there that it's actually gone and stuck inside and it's inside one of the layers and it's not coming out. <laughs> this is the large hole that's left behind when I managed to get the ball bearing out. Now I've turned off some of the lights so that you can see what it would look like if I was shooting in the dark. Obviously I can't turn off all of the lights because then you wouldn't really be able to see anything with the camera. So that's all for today guys, thanks for watching, I hope that you really enjoyed this video and I hope that it's inspired you to make something yourself. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here if you want to find out the full videos then go to my channel and check them out.